Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham Rachahakwarash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutations unto the elect. And I wanted to speak on the coming siege because as you see, uh, food shortages are being spoken of, but we know that they're manufactured as we hear of uh, inflation. You know, and if we understand um, history, we understand that, you know, this particular kingdom here is bound to make the same mistakes you know, uh, as the ancient Roman Empire, and um, they will come after us. You know, ultimately, uh, a siege is being set for you Israelites. And when you go into a siege, ultimately, uh, they're surrounding you um, as they surrounded, you know, the old temple. You know, we're going to read about it here. And they uh, block off, all right, particular food. All right, coming in, uh, you know, to where you are, they block off your water in particular instances, and ultimately they um, trap you to where you have no way out of their grips. Okay, and if you look at what's happening, the roads are all being worked on. There's a maze being created that you know the average person you know won't get out of. You know, now each brother and sister you know has their own story written. All right, but the bulk of us are going to be right in the grips of this, of this devil's hands, and the Lord is just going to have to work a work. Either you'll be delivered, you know, um, you could be put to death. You know, that's always an option. But on the flip side of it, you can be delivered so that a miracle can be worked once you get where you're taking or once you're driving or where they're driving you to, whatever the Lord does. You may be taken for the purpose of, uh, you know, um, giving a testimony unto higher ups. That's written about. OK, you're going to be taken before the, the kings of this earth, you know, the government of this earth as well. of uh, Babylon the great and be face to face with top officials speaking the gospel into them and telling them that they're getting ready to fall. And what's next? <laughs> All right. And, you know, you can be like a Daniel in, in ancient Babylon where they need you to break things down. <laughs> All right. So who knows, you know, what situations we're going to be in. Ultimately, you know, uh, we know um, some are going to be beheaded. But ultimately, the hunger, the famine, and all of those things are for the wicked. Not to say we won't go days without or hours or, you know, we won't go through our um, hard times. But, you know, ultimately, victory is being um, orchestrated in the spirit for the elect. It may seem impossible, but it's all... For the greater, uh, for the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahushua to be glorified through a mighty work being done on the planet Earth. So, as the scriptures say, the righteous is going to scarcely be saved. You know, um, as a matter of fact, we can start here in Luke 1, because that's what Yahweh Shah is set for um, to deliver us out of the hands of our enemies. Okay, Luke, the first chapter. Okay, this is why Israel was so happy, those who understood prophecy and, and and had the spirit to receive him as the son of god they were like yes you know and some even got depressed thinking that once he came and walked as a man you know that that was the end but what he represents for us you go on prophecy is like whoa we need we need him now this is uh luke one uh in 68 this is john the baptist's uh father prophesying it says, blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he have visited to redeem his people and have raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us to perform the mercy promised unto our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore unto our father Abraham, of course, then Isaac and Jacob. That he would grant unto us that we be delivered out of the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. OK. So in that child shall be called the prophet of the highest, for he shall go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. And that ultimately is speaking of uh, John the Baptist. 
okay, who ultimately would, would give knowledge of salvation, which would come through Yahweh Shai, all right? But ultimately, Yahweh Shai represents a way out. Now, also, let's get Isaiah 19, okay, because we're going to be in a position of difficulty, but it also speaks of us being uh, uh, well-fed, okay, laughing while the world is being, you know, uh, uh, in anguish. So there's a victory coming for someone, <laughs> according to the Holy Scriptures, man. We just can hope to be of that number now. Isaiah 19 and 19 says, In that day there should be an altar unto Yahweh in the midst of the land of Egypt. All right? The altar. All right? The way you say that in the Hebrew is a bak, all right, where a sacrifice is offered. Okay? And the land of Egypt is here in America. It says, in a pillar at the border thereof. So this is an altar unto the Lord. Where he, you know, uh, communes with us, where he hears us. And we didn't have that connection for a long time. All right. And in the first covenant, we needed a temple for that connection. We needed a high priest after the seed of Aaron for that connection. Now we have that connection where we can offer up a, a spiritual sacrifice in this decrepit flesh. Okay. Where we've committed sins that ultimately uh, we, we're worthy of death. We're worthy of famine. We're worthy of the harshest judgments. So there's an altar to Yahweh in the midst of the land of Egypt, verse 20, and it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto Yahweh, the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt, for they shall cry unto Yahweh because of the oppressors, meaning he's going to be going hard, losing his damn mind before the Lord gets us, and he shall send them a savior and a great one, and he shall deliver them. You see, and he's going to send that savior and that savior is Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. All right, let's get Jeremiah the fourth chapter. Okay, because we're talking about the coming siege where we see that we see where they're going with it. We see now, you know, that most people aren't bending to their agenda. Well, now they're going to play on your emotions. There's a mind fuckery going on. There's a mind. I was actually checking out this uh, video. I'm going to finish it. It's by Ice Age, former cognitive warfare. That's what's being practiced on the people. You see, to ultimately drive you insane and ultimately drive you into submitting. Okay, now we as the elect, the remnant, we've woken up to the fact that this ain't the way to go. So after we've committed our, our whoredom and, you know, chased after these other guys, we're now repenting, calling on the Lord to get us, understanding that we made a mistake. Okay, so let's go to uh, verse 34 uh, and 31, Jeremiah. For I've heard the voice as of a woman in travail and anguish as of her that bringeth forth her first child, the voice of the daughter of Zion, which is Israel, that bewaileth herself, okay, that spreadeth her hand, saying, Woe is me now, I'm through, for my soul is weary because of murders. Okay, so we're we're going to be in some crazy situations before the Lord gets us out of here, man. This is uh 1 Peter 4 and 18, and if the righteous let's see here. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, what shall be the un, what shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Okay? So the righteous are going to be scarcely saved. The word scarcely is molus, okay, with the difficulty, hardly, not easily, scarcely. So the Lord is going to deliver us out of some crazy situations, but he's going to sustain us the whole way through and work mighty works that are going to uh, make our faith abound through these things. So the, the enemy is doing nothing more than what he did in 70 AD. Okay, remember this is uh, every captivity we've been in in one, and this is the revival of the ancient Roman Empire. All right, so this is uh, Luke 19 and 43. It says, for the days come upon thee. Now this is speaking of 70 AD when they destroyed the temple. Okay, the, the, the Romans, which were Edomites, destroyed the temple. They destroyed the last standing physical temple we had and they you know rebuilt 
particular portions under their, you know, their madness. They have a wall over there now called the Welling Wall, which ultimately is a wall that, uh, what's this guy? Uh, uh, was it Nero? One of those uh, Caesars built, you know, but it's, it, it has nothing to do with our history. It's, it re, you know, it represents ultimately, and they go over there and hump it because it, 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 they're a bunch of weirdos. Why would you hump a wall? But we're crazy. Okay, it says, For the day shall come upon thee that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, okay, and compass thee round, meaning he's going to surround you and keep thee in on every side, and shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another. Because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation, all right? Because the mass majority of the people are eating, drinking, being married, giving into marriage, right? You're just being weird, being proud, being ugly, stanking, okay? Tripping over their own damn feet, all right? Chewing, chewing bubble gum. It's all sorts of folly going on out in this world, man. The women want to be uh, 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 men. The, the men want to be women. So our people don't understand what times are. They don't understand that judgment is being set. A, fa a, a, a systematic famine is being set. Now we read, okay, uh, uh, in Sirach, the 40th chapter, okay, that famine is one of the things the Lord prepares for the wicked in whose sakes the flood come came. Okay, the flood came for the sinners of that time, the proud of that time. So these things that are being prepared, these things ain't being prepared for the elect. Now, we're going to have to go through it, okay, to be refined. But ultimately, the Heavenly Father has a way out for the elect. Okay? And this is what happened to our people in 70 AD. The, the, here it is, the Romans compassed them round about and kept them in on every side. What does it say? Right here. He's going to cast thee a trench about thee, okay, a, a territory where he's going to tell his soldiers they can't leave out here, they can't leave out there, and compass thee round about in on every side. Now, it says in prophecy, okay, in prophecy, <laughs> in the book of 2nd Edges, the 16th chapter, it says a man shall desire to go into a city, or 2nd Edges 15, in 17, a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. See, you're going to desire to go into a city and you're not going to be able. Why? Because there is a, a, a trench set about you full of troops. And the freeways and the roads have been designed to keep you in into the, you can only go and play into their hands. So we're going to need divine inter intervention. Like I said, some may be out of the cities. Right. Some may be in a in a, in a uh, position or a place where they'll be good. All right. But you're still going to need the Lord. Because Esau going to be every there's going to be hell everywhere. The cities are going to be troubled. Okay? So, a lot of us are going to be right. Hey, the, as the scriptures say, uh, we're going to be delivered out of Babylon. Thou shalt go into the city, that great city Babylon, and there shall thou be delivered, man. Okay? It says, a man, verse 19, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread in tribulation. See that the lack of bread is going to lead to what the love of many waxing cold. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor. That means the love people are, are, are gone, man. Gone psycho. Okay. And that's what that word means real quick when you go here and uh, when you go here to the book of uh, Matthew 24 and 12, it says, 
And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Now that word cold is what? Psycho. And that's what you got running around here. A bunch of psychos. Okay? Full of medicines, full of drugs. 90% of them full of drugs. 90 plus percent. Just full of drugs, man. Just bugged out. Okay? So when they don't have access to those things that keep them grounded... What do you what do you see? Psycho. Suko. All right. It says <laughs> to to uh, metaphorically the waning of love, meaning your 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 mind, your morals are gone because you need what you need to get, you know, to, to get some form of comfort to get back to where you were. And that's going to cause people to do what, you know, fight one another. That's why it says a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor. But they shall destroy their houses with with the sword, okay, and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and great tribulation. So the lack of bread is going to lead to people losing their damn minds. And that's what you see being prepared with these food shortages, which has happened before. All right. Uh, uh, not only did they siege us in 70 AD, there was a famine. Going back to the Babylonians, there was a famine. Okay. And this is what, you know, the, the, the scriptures is, is, is telling us that's coming. Okay, let's look at this uh, real quick. This is uh, Luke 21 and 25. It says, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, the stress of the nations with perplexity, the sea and waves roaring. Let's look at this word perplexity because people are perplexed. People are confused. All right. Now, the word. In the Greek is aporia. It says a state of one who is perplexed. Okay, who is in perplexity. You go to the root word. What does it say? All right. To be without resources. To be without resources. All right. <laughs> to be in straits. To be left wanting. To be embarrassed. To be in doubt. Not to know which way to turn. Why? It starts with lack of resources. Okay. What is a resource? Okay. Stock or supply of money, material, staff, and other assets that can be drawn on by a person organization in order to function effectively. Okay. Food is a resource, okay, that people are talking about what stock up on, right? So, and that's going into the sense of money, a collective means of supporting oneself, okay? So to be without resources is perplexity, and that's going to uh, be brought forth by the, the man-made plagues, which are ultimately of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, but it's ultimately on the left-hand side it's through the, the children of Satan. So they're they're bringing forth a lot of these plagues. They're bringing forth the uh, shortages of things on how they get to human beings. And this is why they have to be stopped. So there's going to be great perplexity, especially amongst you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And this is this, these are the signs of the end. Distress of the nations. Okay, we're getting ready to see some serious distress. Okay. And this all has to happen so we get the hell up out of here. Suno, suno -ke. Okay, contradicting straits, distress, anguish. Okay. For the metaphoric uh, uh, purpose, man, because the scriptures are spiritual. So there you go. OK, now I'm going to get into a few scriptures here. First, I'm going to read the book of Ezekiel and show you that ultimately this is what's going to happen again. The, 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 the you know, the, uh, you know, basically what's getting ready to happen. Food rations. You're going to be rationed a particular amount of food. All right. For not only an unjust price, or and you 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 may get it for free, but you, what system are you going to have to go through in order to get that food? What are you going to have to do? 
You think the devil is just going to be like, all right, for any and everybody? No, you're going to have to bow. All right. The image uh, the, to the to the image. You're going to have to bow the knee. You're going to have a, the, to make an oath. OK. With, 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 with Lucy. OK. And what did they say? They said in order to get into the NWO. Everybody's going to have to make an oath to Satan. That's what's happening in the planet Earth. And they're going to use food as a means to tempt you. See, but it all lies upon faith, man. Now, this is Ezekiel, the fourth chapter, when the Babylonians seized the temple. I believe there were three total uh, attacks. The third where they finally took it down. But, you know, when you read the book of uh, Jeremiah, it talks about that he was lamenting. For Israel, man, because they they were they, he saw them going through a famine. He was like, "Damn, they got judged." Okay, so this is the siege of Jerusalem predicted. Okay, this is uh, Ezekiel the fourth chapter. It says, "Thou also, son of man, take thee a towel and lay it before thee, and portray it upon the city, or portray upon it the city, even Jerusalem." It says, and lay siege against it and build a fort against it and cast a mount against it and set the camp also against it and set battering rams round about it. OK, so he's basically telling him to take a towel and act as if that's Jerusalem. And what did he say? Set a camp against it. Meaning the Lord was getting ready to send judgment. That's what's being prepared, man. This is the book of Sirach 40 and 9. Death and bloodshed, strife and sword calamities famine tribulation and the scourge these things are created for the wicked and for their sakes the flood came see so judgment is being set okay now when you read sirach let's see here or psalms 125 And three, it says, for the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. Do good, O Yahweh, unto those that be good, and to them that are upright in their hearts, which is your mind. For as such as turn aside on their, uh, to their crooked, crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity. But peace shall be upon Israel. All of these sellouts who think they... You know, because they may be stocked up. They may have a lot of money, a lot of food. But the Lord is going to put you in positions where you're going to lose and be given over into the, to the and you're already starting by uh, 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 Juice Man, you know, chilling with Juice Man. All right, that damn, that, that uh, hot sauce. Okay. You niggas are going to be full of sauce soon. Then what are you going to do? You, either you're going to uh, just pass out. <laughs> you're going to pass out or you're going to be uh, in line for the for the karagma, man. Starving. Nigga, give me some rice. I don't give a damn. With you. I'll do anything. But these are the times that are coming, man. Now, when you go to Ezekiel, the fourth chapter. All right, the defiled bread. We'll just get to the point. Ezekiel 4 and 16, it says, Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, behold, I will make the staff of bread in Jerusalem, and they shall eat bread by weight and with care, and they shall drink water by measure and with astonishment. All right, now let's read this in the NLT. Okay, let's just read this in the NLT real quick. All right, Ezekiel 4 and 16. Then he told me, son of man, I will make food very scarce in Jerusalem. See that? It will be weighed out with a great care and eaten carefully because your food will be rationed unto you. <laughs> We're even going to have to go unto this on a, on, a, on a particular degree. But the Lord is eventually going to come through for us, meaning we're going to have to be careful about not overeating, you know, preserving what, what you got, all right, not being a, a, a glutton and a demon. 
being in you know prepare yourself to be in situations where you you have to share you 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 eat less these are the times that are coming but eventually overall we're going to be good all right so you're going to have to learn how to fast <laughs> all right it says it will be weighed out with great care and eaten fearfully now this is what the babylonians did to us now we're in babylon the great all right with esau edom ruling with the whole world in his hands okay and and he's at the point where he knows he's done because they want the birthright back this is what all of this is all about man it says the water will be rationed out drop by drop and people will drink it with dismay meaning there's going to be a lack of bread and water bread meaning food and water okay there's going to be it's going to be a, a rationed it's going to be scarce all right amongst all people but jake you're going to go through it man it says lacking food and water people will look at one another in terror all right and they will waste away all right, under their punishment. This is what the Lord professed upon the wicked of our people, man. Okay, and how, how much more in these times? Okay, the very next chapter, okay, goes into, hey, man, the Lord opened up. All right, basically, he's, 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 these things eventually came, but Ezekiel is the one who prophesied these things, man, and spoke it, and it came into fruition, man. Let's see here. Man, when you read this chapter, the animals going to attack them. So you go have church niggas, you know, uh, you know, getting attacked by, you know, just just raccoons with, with added like mean raccoon. I'm talking about giant, you know. All of that uh, shit talking scoffers. All right. Those 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 newly created beasts going to be after your ass, man. And they ain't going to get tired. So it's a bunch of judgments being prepared for scorners, man. <laughs> and this is what happened to Israel. We were judged because of, of uh, verse 17. It says, uh, verse 16, it says, Ezekiel 5, When I shall send upon them the evil arrows of famine, which shall be for their destruction, and I will send to destroy you, and I will increase the famine among, upon you, and I will break your staff of bread. See that? How you get your food, he's going to break it. This is where we are with these food shortages. And this is the judgment for all of the people, man. Not just Israel. All of you people are getting ready to fill it. So will I send upon you famine and evil beast, and they shall bereave thee, and pestilence and blood shall pass through thee, and I will bring... The sword upon thee, I, Yahweh, have spoken it. Right? So in these times, there's going to be a food ration, and that's what you see. Ultimately, like I said, there's inflation where, and in, in, in not too long, all right, you're going to be paying an astronomical amount of money for meat, for particular food, for particular things. They're going to be scarce. Okay, and they've wrote movies about this. They're going to give you, I mean, eventually you're going to get a, uh, there's only, there's going to be only so many jobs you can have. Your job is going to have to be written within their, within their, uh, the qualifications of what a job is. You're going to get a, uh, a monthly stipend. Okay, and your food will be rationed unto you. Now, in order to get into this system, there's going to be something you're going to have to do. Oh, we're already seeing what you got to do. All right, but as the economy crashes and eventually they hone in on world domination, they're going to say, look, using a false flag or whatever they do, they're going to say, look, you got to, you got to, you got to, a hey, Marcus Aurelius. It's Marcus Aurelius time. All right, Mark Ingram. It's touchdown. It's touchdown time. Okay? You know what time it is. Mr. Marcus. <laughs> see and they're gonna come with him and that's gonna be the end on that and once you start seeing that being pushed just know world war three is nigh and and, and 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 destruction is nigh and it's gonna be all hell breaking loose in those times 
Now, when you get Revelation, the sixth chapter, around the fifth verse, as you see, it says the third seal famine, which is dealing with more than just famine. OK, but. Ultimately, is dealing with hell, period, you know, the hard times. And also, as we read, you know, the final captivity, which would come through Esau for the Israelites. OK, so this is Revelation six and five, and it says, and when he had opened the third seal. I heard the third beast say, come and see, and I beheld and lo, a black horse. All right. Now, when you look up this word black. Or it just represents hard times, hell on the earth, a dark period, okay? Which is Esau's rulership, man. <laughs> Look up that word black. All right. It's like it says melas. All right. Black ink. All right. Then you go to the Vines Expository. Okay, um, you know, to be dirty, bad, okay? When you view the whole entire context, okay? It says, black, blackness, gloom, okay? Seems to have been associated with the idea of a tempest. Oh, well. It is related to Skotos, darkness, and that passage, okay, Exodus 10 and 22, okay, uh, Zephaniah 1 and 15, I know that that's one. It says, that day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble, a day of distress, a day of wasteness, all right, and a day of darkness and gloominess, okay, and a day of clouds and thick darkness, all right, which ultimately hell is going to be going on on the planet Earth. And then the missiles are going to hit. <laughs> That's the day of the Lord. OK, torture. All right. Uh, uh, famine. You know, the sword. OK, all of these things. Hey, what does it say in uh, the scriptures? Let's get it. Uh, the book of. Uh. Because we're living in a time of vengeance and that's going to come to the planet Earth. All right. During Esau's reign, as this is the proudest age, it says, as is. The ruler, so are the people. So these people have waxed proud and there's no fear of the Lord. Now, this is the book of Sirach 39. I'll start at 28. It says there be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes and in the time of destruction they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them fire and hell famine and death all these were created for vengeance okay wild teeth of beast scorpions serpents okay <laughs> oh my goodness the sword and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction right so hell is coming for you niggas, man. Hell is coming for the you proud ass people, period. You heathen. A lot of destruction is coming, man. But famine is a part of it. And we're living in a time where Esau is manufacturing a famine. That's just part of the woes that are coming. So this this black horse is associated and synonymous with, with, with hard times, man. OK, and that will come through the fourth beast where the saints will be worn out. OK, so when you read it, it says. And when he opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, come see, and I beheld lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And when you look up. The word balances. Okay, it's ultimately captivity. All right, which. The final captivity for the Israelites will come through Esau, man. The word is Zugos, okay? A yoke. And what does it say in the book of uh, Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter? He would have put a yoke of iron around our necks. 
And now he's creating a uh, digital captivity. All right. And there's going to be a uh, digital all associated with it. That's what this whole NWO is about. Mass enslavement of the Lord's creation. Okay. But it means a pair of balances. It says a yoke that is put on uh, draught cattle. Okay. And ironically, Nimrod, one of the cities he built, the name of it was Resin. And it, and it deals with a bridle that you put on a horse. Basically, the control of the people, man. What does it say in the book of uh, Habakkuk? He heapeth unto him, him gather unto himself all nations, and heapeth unto himself all people. And ultimately, the Israelites went through the hardest captivity of, of, of all nations, man. Okay? Burden. Bondage. Okay? Okay? As that of slavery, it says, of troublesome laws imposed on one. And we're living in a time where some very troublesome laws, okay, and draconian measures are coming. Okay? <laughs> command, basically dealing with a, a, a command or basically you being in bondage or a burden under something. A balance, a pair of scales. And he, he uses unjust practices of weights and measures of in gold okay to, he's pretty much got everybody in a mass enslavement through what debt that thick clay okay empty money all right which now we're in the time of uh hyperinflation man which is going to cause what an economic collapse it's, it's happened before then he's going to ration food out to you. Okay, he's going to uh, make sure uh, not much food goes into particular, what food goes where, how much food people get. So ultimately, the black horse is dealing with hard times and captivity for the Israelites. All right. As well as what he's getting ready to do now, which we're still in his hands. But he wants, you know, uh, he wants our soul captive to him so he's getting ready to lose his damn mind the scriptures say woe to the inhabitants of the hurt earth and of the sea because the devil has come down unto you having great wrath the accuser of the brethren he wants the birthright you see so revelation 6 and 6 it says, says and i heard a voice in the midst of the void the four beasts say a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny and see thou hurt not the oil all right and the wine now we're living in a time where people think shit is okay what's that scripture uh victuals shall be so dirt cheap all right and ultimately uh we're living in a time where the inflation is leading to food being rationed unto you as well. Okay. What is that in the book of uh, Second Edris, the 16th chapter, in the 21st uh, verse? People think shit is okay, just like they did in ancient Rome. All right. Why? Because of the bread, the circuses. <laughs> okay, people thought that they were in good case. You were able to go get, you know, your uh, your twenty piece uh, hot wing and wedges. Okay, goodness gracious, them big gigantic wings. Like how? What? What's going on here? Shit just ain't adding up. You know, when you see an actual chicken and sometimes you see how big these pieces of chicken are, man. But then, you know, in the ancient world, things were bigger. So we, we just got to get the hell up out of here, man. You don't know whether to be happy over the big piece of chicken or mad. God damn. 
Anyway, Second Ezra 16 and 21. Behold, victuals shall be so good cheap up on the earth that they shall think themselves to be in good case. And even then shall evils grow upon the earth. Sword, famine, and great confusion. See that? Sword, famine, and great confusion are growing on the earth. All right, for many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine. All right, and the other shall uh, that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. So you escape the city and you say, we're going to flee. And then you go out into the forest. And three hours into your, uh, uh, you know, you go out into the, the, the woods or the, the wilderness of the city or whatever you at or out the outskirts. And then Esau shows up. Just, 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 just the, the lawlessness. No police. You can't. The, the cell phone. No cell phones are working. There's no form of communication. And then Esau shows up with the sword. Then his four-year-old shoots your ass in the head. So you escape. You escape the the city. <laughs> All right. This is right after you thought everything was okay because you can get all of them goddamn wedges and wings. Okay, and all those nuggets and those 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 uh you know, eight tacos for five dollars, right? Then famine comes. Then you escape the famine, okay, and escape the hunger, and you got you you got your little stash somewhere ducked off. You know, four, four to five months worth of food. You're like, well, shit. You know, I'm a, I'm a just, you know, I'm, a, you know, I'm just, watch what I do. You know, eat here. You know, I should be all right. I should make it till, and then a, a, a Moabite breaks in, right? He breaks in, and hits your ass over the head with a with a with a bat. Okay, and and take your goods. This is the type of thing that's gonna be happening, man. Or Edomite or, or pack of niggas, you know? So, for well, many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine, and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. And the dead shall be cast out as dung, and there shall be no man to comfort them, for the earth shall be wasted, the city shall be cast down, and there shall be no man left to till the earth or to sow it. So complete hell is coming to this place. So if you invest in this place, you invest in this. You see? <laughs> yeah. So the food shortage that's being, you know, conducted and put together is all, is, is just a leeway into hell taking place on the earth, man. So let's read it again. Revelation 6 and 6. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say a measure of wheat for a penny. Let's look up this word measure real quick. A measure of wheat. We know wheat you know, deals with grains, you know. Uh, Quinix says a dry measure containing. All right. A. A. Uh, or two satari less than a quart as or as much as would support a man moderate of appetite for a day <laughs> yeah your food's gonna be rationed to you as well man to draw you in using the flesh to draw you into the you know using because this is gonna be the hour of temptation right the hour of temptation so uh, <laughs> And even at a point to get to a point where food is even rationed unto you, what are you going to have to do? What are you going to have to do? You already know what you're going to have to do. Okay. And that word, I believe that word for, for penny is denarius, or de, de, which was devalued, which led to hyperinflation in the ancient Roman Empire. Okay, denarion, denarion, a penny, then containing ten. 
uh, Roman silver coinage in the New Testament time. It took the name of being equal to less than 10 asses. Number after showing you money was of the earth more so in ancient time. You know, it says it was the principal silver coin of the Roman Empire. From the parable of laborers in the vineyard, it seemed to that a denarius was then the ordinary pay for a day, a day's wages. Wow. So, <laughs> hey, and there's going to come a point, you know, where they control what jobs you're going to, you know, be, you know, uh, get. They're going to, you know, uh, ration out the food. Hell is going to basically hard times, man. Through an unjust system, through an unjust ruler. That's why the scriptures say, <laughs> when these things be fulfilled, let's get that in the book of Habakkuk, the second chapter. My favorite scripture, one of my favorite scriptures. Hey, Habakkuk 2 and 4, behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. So he's going to be losing his goddamn mind. Because ultimately, this is his last chance, okay? This is where he's going to lay it all on the line, you know? He's going to fight the second coming of Yahweh Shai. He's going to be shooting lasers down on the earth. He's going to release all sorts of diseases. He's going to try to starve every. You know, he's just going to lose his damn mind, which is going to require the just to live by faith because he ultimately thinks he's the most high, you know? It's very funny, you know, seeing him try to do this because he looks absolutely terrible. Okay, but this is where we are, a measure of wheat for a penny. And what is this dealing with? Famine. This is what does it say? The third seal of famine. This is how he's going to, as we see being orchestrated, formulate a, a uh, manufactured famine in which the food is there. But a system is being put in place through the system of buying and selling that the only way you can, you know, live on the planet Earth and, and flourish as an individual is to do something. And that something is written in Revelation, the 13th chapter. You see, so it says a um, a, a measure of wheat for a penny. Okay, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see that thou hurt not the oil, all right, and the wine, because the elect are going to be protected through this all, all right. As uh, as the scriptures say, Ezekiel, or uh, was that uh, Psalms thirty seven? Say so we're going to laugh at famine. Okay. So this devil is going to start. That's why the scriptures say the just, the just shall live by faith. All right. His soul, which is lifted up in him, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. Okay. Psalms 37. Let's see here. Psalms 37 and 19, they shall not be ashamed in the evil time and in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. OK. Meaning the, the elect are going to be good in a time of famine. We're going to be satisfied somehow, some way. Right. Which I believe that's also in Isaiah. All right. We shall laugh. What's that Isaiah 66. Isaiah 65 and 13. Therefore, thus said the Lord God, behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall be shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. So people are going to be through and the elect. All right. The heavenly father is going to work miracles, man. Watch miracles are coming. But you got niggas talking about ain't no miracles, man. So the oil and the wine are symbolic of the Lord preserving the elect through it all, man. 
Isaiah 55 and 1, the free offer of mercy. Ho, everyone that thirsted, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye, buy and eat. All right. Speaking of the truth. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Meaning uh, uh, this truth. Meaning inclining your ear unto the true understanding of these scriptures, man. Which are people are, are, are ultimately spending money for that which is not bread. The second verse. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfies not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. And that that's this truth. All right, the true uh, bread, the true wine. Okay, the true oil. Okay. Proverbs 21 and 20. There is a treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man spendeth it up. You see, in the, uh, the, 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 the oil and the wine are going to survive this all. See, Esau thinks he's going to destroy everything. He's going to destroy the elect. He's going to cut off the, the birthright, the, the truth. He's going to rewrite what is. He's going to, you know, ultimately block the sun and cut off the seed of his. He's, he's got all sorts of things planned. And, and ultimately through famine is where a lot of it, he, he got it all mapped out, you know, controlling how you're going to get your food, you know, sieging you into his system to either get you to fully rebel and bow to Satan or put you to death. Okay, it talks about how in Revelation, the second chapter, let's get that, we can end there. Revelation, the second chapter, in the 10th verse, it says, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried and have shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee the crown of life. Who's the devil? Esau. Right. He's going to use this system. He's going to come down with all sorts of draconian measures and unjust laws. And eventually we're going to have to suffer and go. Some of us are going to be cast into prison. That we may be tried. And that's what this whole thing that es Esau's bring is going to be. A tr it's going to try your, your faith. It's going to tempt your flesh. See, he has so much power over the flesh through this do thou wilt vibration he's pushed Obey your thirst, you know, the, the, the hateful order and people mind have been manipulated to accept, you know, this false sense of freedom that only destroys them. Order is the way to go. OK, but we're going to be tried. All right, Pirazzo and the Lord put something special in the elect. All right, we're seeking the true oil and wine. All right, and uh, 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 you know, uh, bread and wine. You all is seeking that false bread. Proverbs twenty one and seventeen: He that loveth pleasure, pleasure shall be a poor man, and he that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. <laughs> all right. Proverbs 21 and 17, those who love pleasure become poor and those who love wine and luxury will never be rich. So that's where Esau is going to uh, play on you people. And you, you, you're going to choose pleasure. All right. Which really is your enslavement in a whole nother manner or your destruction. And you're going to become poor. You that love wine and luxury and chose this world. Because of his great technology and all of, all of the comforts it gives you. You're not going to be rich. The elect are going to win. The true oil and the wine are going to be the final survivors. <laughs> all right. Uh, and going to get beamed up out of this, man. And all of the survivors on the planet Earth who are uh, still round about. When we come down, we're going to set things in order. So I think that's it, man. You know, we're going to be tried, man, to try whether a thing can be done, trial, test, temptations of the devil. So we're going to have patience, man, because uh, this devil is coming, man. So hopefully y'all are edified. On to the next. Shalom.